Good morning to you. Now, I trust you had a very good night's rest and that you're all rejuvenated for the day ahead of you. I trust that you're eager this morning to drink in the Word of God. We look at our surroundings waking up this morning, knowing that God had worked all night. God had never stopped working, not even in your lives. The word I want to bring you this morning sort of ties up the last two sermons <clears throat> two weeks ago where the sermon was about the blood of Jesus that saves you completely. And last week, God calling you by your name, knowing your name. How awesome is that? That the creator of heaven and earth knows you personally. This morning's reading is taken from 2 Timothy chapter 1. Just verse 9, Paul writes to Timothy, He has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of His own purpose and grace. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. Yet we find it, and the remarkable word in the second epistle that Paul writes to his brother Timothy. He writes this to Timothy from Rome while he is captive. And we encounter this encouraging word this morning where God says, God has saved you and called you. You see, my friends, once God has saved you, you cannot be more saved. Once you are saved, it is final. There are people preaching out there in the world that there are different levels of being saved. Let's get it straight this morning. If we are just honest with ourselves and with God this morning, we are all sinners. And everyone that believes in Jesus Christ and makes Him Lord in his life is saved. There is no such thing as being saved, being more saved, being most saved. When you are saved, it is a total saved. There are no levels to that. God saved us from the penalty of sin at Calvary. That day at Calvary, he saved you totally. God continues to save us from the power of sin through a Christian life. And God is going to save us from the presence of sin when we stand before him in glorified bodies one day. And it was all by his grace. It is all by the power of His Son, Jesus Christ. We are not saved because of our goodness or our achievements. We are not redeemed of anything we have done or by anything we have done. We are not adopted into God's family due to any merit of our own, but because of Eternity past, He purposed to save us by grace. God saved us and called us to live a holy life. And He did this not because we deserve it this morning, but because this was His plan from the beginning of time. God through the willful killing of his son, saved you. Now out of gratitude for what he did, we allow him to change our lives. We allow him and we invite him into our lives and we allow him to change our lives from an earthly calling to an heavenly calling. This is a transition from an earthly living to a heavenly living. 
This, this morning you can accept as the truth by being obedient, obedient to the prompting of the Holy Spirit. Or you could choose to rebel and ignore the prompting of the Holy Spirit this morning. You see, the decision is yours, but the one takes you forward into sanctification and the other decision takes you backwards towards condemnation. The decision you make will either elevate you or depress you. It remains your call this morning. God takes you through this process of purification at a pace that is fitting and comfortable for you. A pace that you can handle until one day you are totally set aside for God. And that is called holiness. And once again I want to have a look at the concept of holiness. There is no one holier than the other. There is only one that walked this earth that was holy in himself. And that was the Son of God, the only Son of God. Jesus Christ, our Savior, the only holy being to walk the face of the earth. The people out there that think they are holier than thou are self-righteous and are condemned in their own. No matter what you do, without Jesus you are condemned. We stand as children of God, holy, not because of our works, not because of what we have done, but because of His holiness. Yes, we are all busy conquering our own Goliaths in our lives, en route to shedding the earthly the earthly ways that we have learnt. And I agree, I agree this morning. And I want to encourage you this morning to continue on that route, improving, in improving and becoming more holy. This is called sanctification. But you are already considered holy by God, not because of who you are, but because of who his son is, because of the true vine that you are grafted into once you accept Jesus as Christ in your life. So I just want to take us to the Old Testament and link up uh, to Timothy, to Isaiah. Um, Isaiah chapter 1. Now, I just want to highlight verse 18. Come now, let us settle this matter, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. Now you can go this week and spend time in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 1 till 20. And it will sort of summarize what I'm saying today, the, the message I'm trying to get across this morning. In this epistle, Paul writes to Timothy to encourage Timothy, to encourage him to remain in his calling, what he has been called to do. Now, according to history, Timothy was the first bishop of the Ephesian church, quite a major man. And his name, Timothy, the name Timothy means honored by God or honoring God. And this great man of God, even he, needs encouragement. How much more do we need encouragement from each other and from the Word? Now, as soon as I mention the word calling, all of a sudden your mind races to what should I be doing for the church? What should I be doing for the kingdom? This concept of calling, I think, is by us pastors is bashed around and misused. And your mind races to what I should be doing. Your mind races to works rather than faith. 
This morning I want to tell you, your calling is not what you do, but rather who you are in Christ. Your calling, my friend, is not your career. Your calling and your career are not synony synonymous. They are one. Your calling is who you are outside of what you do. So many people in this world define themselves by what they do. Who are you? You can ask a person, who are you? And they'll, admit it, or they'll, they'll start with their name and their surname. I am Mark Southey and I'm a preacher. And that's how we define ourselves by what we do. You see, your calling is who you are outside of what you do. You have a faith calling and that will remain steadfast and firm. Because your faith calling is who you are in Christ. You are a child of God in Christ. And then you'll have a vocational calling and that is what you do. And that, my friends, I know is not so steadfast. That, I can guarantee you, will change many times in your lives. And the two are not one. Your calling is who before do and your who is based on what Jesus did for you on the cross you see Jesus took all your sin so that you could stand before God sinless Jesus took all your judgment so that you could stand before God, not condemned, but redeemed. Jesus took all the lashings before the crucifixion so that you could be healed by his stripes. Jesus took on the cross all the condemnation so that you could be justified and righteous before God. Jesus on the cross said to his father, my God, my God, why, why hast thou forsaken me? The forsaken means, why have you abandoned me? Why have you deserted me? Jesus took the abandoning of God, the desertion of God upon him, so that God will never abandon you. The Apostle Paul warns Timothy in this verse, and if you look at verse 7, before you get to what we read, you, you read the following. For God gave us a spirit not of fear. This is the thing is, we step, step into the fear trap. But God has given us a spirit of power, love and self-control. It is so often fear that drives us out of our God calling, out of our who we are. This morning, I need to remind you who you are in Jesus Christ. This morning, I need to remind you that you are a child of God because of Jesus Christ. And that no fear can enter you, shall enter you. Fear often drives us out of our calling. When we step into our calling, God gives us three things. Power, love and self-control. My dear friend, as we conclude this morning, it's such a beautiful morning. We had a lot of rain in the last week. We've been so blessed, but I want to conclude this morning. No matter what you have done, no matter what you are facing this week and today and tomorrow, I want to remind you this morning that Jesus has conquered it all for you. Jesus has done it all for you. And He 
will never forsake you. He has done it all. He is the friend that will stand by your side through thick and thin. He is the friend that will stand by your side through trial and temptation and accepting him into your life, doing yourself that favor this morning again, accepting him to your life will elevate your life to heights that you can only imagine and above. Jesus is the Christ that redeemed us, that brought us free by sacrificing his own body. He is Jesus Christ, our Lord. I want to pray for you this morning. I don't know what you are facing this morning, but I want you to be encouraged by the word this morning. Jesus has saved you and is calling you. Let us pray together. Lord God, Heavenly Father, Father, thank you. Thank you, Father, that you considered us worthy to send your one and only Son to this world, to take upon his shoulders all we have done, all we have become, to take upon his shoulders on that cross all our sin and to wash us as clean as snow. Through your Son, we can stand together as your children this morning and pray to you, Father. Pronounce, Father, how great is our God, the only living God, our Father, who art in heaven. Thank you, Father, for blessing us. Thank you for carrying us. Thank you, Father, this morning that I can pray for every member every member of our church and every person that is tuned in that is also a member of our church, of your church. Pray, Father, that they will realize that they are bought free children of God this morning, that their calling is who they are and that they will realize in this week that they are children of the Most High, the Sovereign Lord, the everlasting God. We thank you, Father, for the great sacrifice. I want to pray for this week as we head into this week, Father, that you are with every single family member out there, everyone that has tuned in, that you will comfort them in their distress, that you will lead them, that you will be the light that lights up the path in dark days. That your call will be answered, Father. We thank you, Father, for your presence in our lives. We thank you for your word that we can stand on, stand firm in this morning, knowing that you are Lord of Lords, God of Gods. I thank you for this morning, Father. I thank you for the peacefulness out here, the fresh, crisp air this morning as nature wakes up this morning. May our spirits be woken up by you this morning. We thank you for your Son. And it is in His name, Jesus Christ, that we pray this morning. Amen. My friends, until we see you again, please keep safe. Remember, we miss you and we love you. And keep in the word of the Lord. Amen.